I'm not a doctor, but I am an environmental engineer, and I think I can give a fairly unique and useful perspective. I wanted to make a really important video on the huge increase in degenerative and developmental diseases which we see in our society today. Now, this is a terrible problem, and yet it's not really addressed very well in the media or anywhere else. Something like 1 in 150 American children now has autism. Around half of all Americans over age 85 now have Alzheimer's. And these statistics are so mind-boggling that most people just block them out. I mean, there was an entire war against polio, and yet I think it was only one in every 3,000 children that had polio. I think the first thing that you have to look at is why we're not really even addressing these problems. And unfortunately, the real reason, in my opinion, is that everybody kind of knows, either consciously or unconsciously, that these diseases are caused by environmental factors, by factors in our modern lifestyle. And no one really wants to face that. Certainly industry doesn't want to face the liability associated with that. And the government certainly doesn't want to face the fact that our lifestyle is causing an enormous problem like this. People just don't want to face this problem. In fact, the large-scale studies necessary to help pinpoint the causes of these problems aren't going to be funded by government or industry. There's even a lot of denial that these are even environmentally caused conditions at all. So let me address that first. Autism was never even documented before 1938, and the doctor who first documented it said that it was the only case he had seen in 17 years of practice. And I think most people in the field will generally seem to agree that autism is increasing exponentially and has been for the last decade or more. Now again, there aren't any well-funded, wide-ranging studies which can back this up, but there are a few almost sadly anecdotal studies. For example, studies of the Amish, which show that autism is probably a hundred times more prevalent among the normal population than among the Amish, who practice a different lifestyle and diet. Alzheimer's is even more obvious. All you have to do is look at the average American who's 80-something years old and look at the average person who grew up in a traditional society who's 80-something years old. It very quickly becomes apparent that a huge percentage of the American population has some mild form of dementia or Alzheimer's, whereas it's very rare in traditional societies. And again, unfortunately, the epidemiological studies haven't been funded to try to pinpoint the causes of this. But I think, again, that there's not too much dispute among healthcare practitioners that Alzheimer's, just like autism, has been increasing rapidly over the last few decades. Now, problems like this almost always have a genetic component as well as an overlap of one or more environmental factors that cause the problem to manifest. So you have to look at what's changed in American society over the last 50 years, and in particular, what's continued to change in an accelerating trend over the last 10 to 20 years. Now, heavy metals are pretty much proven to cause neurological damage, and many people implicated thimerosal in autism. Unfortunately, the government did more to obstruct this study than, than to aid it. However, at this point, thimerosal has been banned from child vaccines for several years in the United States and even longer in other countries, and you haven't really apparently seen the great decrease in autism that you would expect if mercury was the only cause of autism. Likewise, in my understanding, there's a lot of evidence that aluminum is at least a partial cause of Alzheimer's. But it doesn't really appear that aluminum loadings have been increasing that rapidly the way Alzheimer's has, although, again, few if any studies have been funded. Prions have also been implicated in some types of Alzheimer's, like Crutchfield-Jacobs. And again, unfortunately, this hasn't really been studied adequately because it's not in anyone's interest to generate that type of liability or the types of expensive changes in animal husbandry that would be necessary if, if prions did cause certain types of Alzheimer's. A good book on this subject is Mad Cow USA. In the little bit of time I have left, though, I'd like to talk about what I feel is one of the potentially most overlooked causes of these neurological disorders that are increasing so rapidly in America. There's an additive in our food that's been around since the 1930s, but its use has been increasing very rapidly for the last 10 to 20 years, and that's hydrogenated oil, or trans fats. Now, the brain is made up mostly of fat molecules, and trans fats are an unnatural type of fat molecule which we can't really process. 
So one of the first things you'd think a researcher would look at is what's the effect of trans fats on our nervous system? Unfortunately, this isn't really studied, just like all the other issues aren't really studied. There are short-term studies and animal studies, but it's hard to see these long-term debilitating trends <clears throat> from a short-term study of another animal species. Around the early 1990s, we saw a great increase in the amount of trans fats in our diet. That's when many processed foods and most fast foods switched from lard to trans fat. This happened for a number of reasons. Uh, I go over it a little bit in my video, How the Mass Media Works. Um, but basically, the bottom line was trans fats are cheaper than lard, and so people switched over, industry switched over. And ever since then, for the last 10 to 20 years, the average American has been eating a lot more trans fats than ever before. And this kind of does mirror the increase in Alzheimer's, autism, and perhaps other neurological disorders over the last 10 to 20 years. Now, I'm not saying that trans fats are the only cause of these neurological problems, but they could certainly be a potential cause. And we wouldn't really know it because the studies necessary have not been done and they're probably not going to be done. Now sure, there may be eventually small studies which point in this direction, and someday trans fats will probably be outlawed everywhere, the way they've already been outlawed in Denmark and New York and other places where the people are a little more educated. But I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for that to happen. Prions, biomagnification of mercury, aluminum additives, and trans fats, they're all eliminated or greatly reduced by eating organic food or preparing your own food rather than buying pre-processed food. Also, preparing your own food, eating organic food, and using traditional recipes will increase healthy cofactors in your diet, such as antioxidants and a proper essential fatty acid ratio. And again, these things have been pr basically proven in studies to improve neurological development and also to delay neurological disorders. The most difficult step really is just coming to terms with the severity of this problem and then admitting to yourself that it probably is environmental in nature. After that, it's just a matter of removing as many potential causes as possible and educating people about this and getting other people and your loved ones to understand that there is a problem and it needs to be dealt with.